Father, we just thank you so much. Amen. Bless the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for waking us up today, just allowing us to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for just guiding us by your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the living word of God. We thank you for the word that you have for us and you've prepared for us on tonight. As we get ready to enter into this ministering of this word, we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us of our sins, that you would forgive us of our transgressions and every iniquity we've done with our thoughts, with our eyes, with our ears, with our nose, with our mouth, with our hands, with our hearts, with our soul and our feet and every part of our being, every wicked and evil thought, every wicked and evil act that we have done that is sinful and displeasing to you, we ask you to forgive us and we thank you for your forgiveness. We pray for everyone who is going to join us on the line tonight. We just um, ask, Lord God, that you would bless each and every one, that we would hear this word, receive this word, and live this word by faith. May we be encouraged, may we be strengthened by the word of God. And may Brother Ray be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you would just minister to us through this brother on tonight. We thank you for your word, O oh God, your word, which keeps us, sustains us, strengthens us, leads us, guides us, instructs us, corrects us. This word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. We are very grateful to have the living word of God as a part of our lives. So we thank you on tonight. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, praise God. Well, tonight, the topic's going to be, we're just going to get right into it successfully preparing to petition God's throne. Talking about God's courtroom. And the reason why the um, Holy Spirit just compelled me to talk about this tonight, um, as we know, when we have prayer and, you know, deliverance prayer, the first thing we do is when we talk to those that come to us, uh, what do we say? We say, you know, we want to make sure there's no legalities. When they say, what are legalities? That means, have you given any legal right to the devil to come attack you? Legal right? What are you talking about? Well, you know, we talk about the different legalities. You know, one is sin. One is unforgiveness. Right? Those are two major ones that we often see. And so a lot of people will go into their mind and they'll be like, no, I think I'm good. Yeah, I've forgiven everybody. See, they're searching their soul, their mind, their emotions, and their will. But tonight we're going to talk about searching your heart. Because sometimes at the surface level, everything looks good. But even for myself, you know, I always have to ask the Lord every day to search my heart. Because a lot of times I will find iniquity in the heart, wrong attitudes, right? Doubt, unbelief. Um, maybe judgmental spirits in my heart. But at the surface level, I'm, I'm cool, right? And then you're wondering why you're not making a breakthrough in certain areas of your life. And those are because the devil got legalities. Those things haven't brought to the surface. But we're going to talk about, thank God, you know, we have the Holy Spirit as our legal counselor, right? He knows everything. You know, he searches the heart. Because, you know, Revelation 12, 10 or 10, it says that Satan is our accuser day and night. So he's always looking, you know, I'm telling you, these, these what do they call it? They're, they're litigators. They're always looking for some way to come against us, to accuse us, to get legal right to hinder our petitions to the throne. You know, the Bible says what? My people, my people perish for lack of knowledge. OK, so Bible says, and all of I get and get understanding. So that's what we're going to uh, do tonight. Let me just go to our first slide. Let's open this up. OK, it says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Ye double minded. So we're going to talk about purifying your heart. So as, as we draw near to God, and how do we draw near to God? Through prayer, through reading his word, 
Because why? We go over this all the time. Uh, when we read the word, what is the word? The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was God. So every time we open the word of God, we are literally, literally visiting with God. OK, so that draws us closer to him just by reading the word. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. We're going to talk about King David and, you know, what he did to cleanse his heart. Because if you don't have a clean heart, that brings a legality. That means a legal right that the kingdom of Satan has against a person. Okay, this is, we're talking about, this is James 4, 8, the scripture. Before petitioning the throne of God, it is vital to make sure your heart is clean. If the heart is not clean, it can give place to an unhindered demonic influence and attacks in one's life, which can include ongoing generational curses, poverty, patterns of failed relationships, sickness, and even premature death. God's word tells us, don't give place to the devil. That's Ephesians, Ephesians 4.27. And, yet, and that's true. Many people die before their time because uh, they have given place to the devil. So we always talk about Joshua 1 and 8. We're going to talk about that even more. It says meditate on the word of God day and night. Make sure you observe to do what it is and obey it, and then you'll have good success. And that's the key. That's why? Because God's the Bible is God's law book. And we are literally, whether we know it or not, going to court every day. OK, we're going to the courtroom every day, whether we're aware of it or not. So that's why it's key, uh, you know, key to know the law. We have to know the law. We have to know God's law book. We have to know the legal process. Let's read what King David's petition was to God in the Old Testament. After he had committed adultery with Bathsheba and had her husband killed. So, you know, King David finally went humbly before the Lord because he committed these, these great sins. And this is what he said, have mercy. So he's coming with humbleness upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. He knows he's, you know, he knows he's serving a loving God. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, my sins. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, so he's repenting, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be Whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. And this is the key. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So David knew, and David spent a lot of time with God as a shepherd, right? He spent a lot of time with God. So he knew he had to humble himself. He knew for you know him to have God hear him, he had to have a clean heart. This is Psalms 51, 1 through 10. Any words on that? Anything the Holy Spirit is uh, speaking to your hearts? Any revelation you have? I just remember when David did um, when David did what he did as far as um, sleeping with Bathsheba and killing her husband on the bat, having him killed on the battlefield. Mm. And, and I remember, you know, I'm hearing you talk about, you know, how we 
examine ourselves and how we um, we search our souls, but we don't search our hearts. You know, we right. don't really, we don't really know what's in our hearts. The Holy Spirit is the one who can really, really tell us the truth about that. I remember in scripture, it talks about how King David um, really did not acknowledge his sin until the prophet Nathan brought it to his attention. Mm. And sometimes we fall into that category too. However, what I do appreciate about King David is after the prophet Nathan exposed to him what he did in a very clever way by being indirect mm -hmm. and allowing King David to make his own judgment actually on his own, on his own self, not knowing that's what he was doing. Right. Um, then King David was, was ready to acknowledge what he did was wrong. But up until that point, he did not. That's good. That's true. You know, like I said, <clears throat> He allowed God, he's asking God, he's petitioning God to first search his heart. You know, he wanted a clean heart. He wasn't <clears throat> asking for like riches or, you know, safety, his kingdom. You know, he knew the first step was to get a clean heart. Okay. And, and that's sometimes, you know, how, you know, uh, humanity can be, you know, of many believers can be how I would used to be. It's like, you know, we just kind of look at things from the surface level, you know, I'm in trouble. Okay. And immediately I'm just going with what I need. Right. Not looking inwardly. You know, we might look inwardly for, okay, I'm, I guess I'm all right. Okay. I'm sorry for that. But see, it's not really coming from the heart. You're just coming from your mind. Okay. I know what I need to do to get, you know, th this petition through, Okay, I repent. I repent. But see, I'm not really repenting from the heart. I'm not letting the Holy Spirit really come into my heart and convict me, right? And speak to me about my sin. And to help me get it right, speak wisdom. You know, maybe he, he, the Holy Spirit might want to send me through some scriptures to meditate on so I could clean my heart out. But see, many people want to deal with, with their mind. I, I repented. Yeah, I did repent. I said I was sorry, right? I said I was sorry. No, that's that's not going to do it. You got to go right from the heart. You know, Romans 8, 27 says, and he that searches the hearts, what do you say? And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit. Because where the spirit is, is in your heart. That's your heart mind. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. See, so many people, they try to do the spirit's job. And, and I, I can search it myself. I think, you know, I'm, I'm using my mind to do my searching. And it starts there. Don't get me wrong. There are things that you can repent for, you know, through your mind, right? But to get to deeper things, to get everything for the, let's say the for the spirit searches all things. Okay, so look at verse eleven. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. What does it say? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. See, some things we, we, we can't know on our own, even though they're within us. You know, you need the God spirit and you got to go to him and petition. That should be the first petition. The first petition isn't, I need a new job. I need some money. The first petition is, Lord, clean my heart. Make my motives right. Because if the Lord had me doing, he says, you know, okay, once you petition for your petition, get your heart right so your motives are right, your intent is right. Why are you petitioning for that? What are the motives behind that? Okay, even if you're gonna do ministry, what is your motive behind doing that? Are you trying to be seen? Right? Are you just trying to get some more notches on your belt? Or are you going there truly in love? 
you going in there on obligation or you just you just feel obligated so you're just going to do it cuz you know you promise or are you really being led from love you want to do we got to do everything in love so the lord says everything you do you want to do it what in love Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. See, that we might know, we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. So it says, but this, we need the spirit. We have received the spirit, so the spirit's going to let us know. We have that within us, but many people don't go to the spirit. They go to their mind. They just go right to the mind. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. See, that's in the in mind. But which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Talking about discernment. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 16. Any words on that? Anything that the Holy Spirit's given to you on those uh, passages? No. Praise God. Okay, so as we see in verse 10, God's word states, for the spirit searcheth, you know, the things. This is vital because if we go before the throne with unrepented iniquity in our heart, God will turn away from us. People say, no, God won't turn away from you. But let's see what the scripture says. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Isaiah 59, 2. God loves us, but he cannot look upon that sin if, if it's unrepented. Right? David knew that. Out of the Father's love, mercy, and grace for us, he sent his Holy Spirit to be our counselor. The Holy Spirit is our court-provided legal counselor. Ain't that great that we got <laughs> the Holy Spirit as our legal counselor? You can't get a better lawyer than that, right? Which searches our heart thoroughly for any present and past spiritual crimes we have committed that Satan would use to prosecute against us, such as unforgiveness, pride, habitual sin, uncasted cares, etc., now, I, I know as, as being a counselor, many times when people go through abuse, right, they suppress it into their subconscious to the point to where they really they don't even remember it anymore, right? You ever heard that when people have gone through, um, you know, people that have dealt with post-traumatic stress disorder or have been abused as a child, they're able to, you know, suppress those harmful, you know, uh, memories, right? And compartmentalize it way back in the mind to where they don't even remember it anymore. And then something might trigger it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I remember uh, one kid uh, that was on my caseload, he was kidnapped at a campsite, you know, uh, by a man taken, be abused, you know, and they actually, he was at a campsite, I think in Yosemite. They, they, they stuffed him under a bed for he was there for like about a week and, and finally escaped and got away. But he's remember he was given grape soda, you know, uh, as part of the drink. They, they, the captor would give him grape soda. So he says, and he had told me now when he has grape soda, he can't be around grape soda because that smell right there just triggers all those memories. OK, well, see, the Holy Spirit. He's our he's our counselor. Right. He's a loving counselor. Many of us maybe have suppressed some things in the past. You know, maybe it was a, a event of bullying or it could have been sexual abuse or whatever type of abuse. Right. And, you know, you had to, someone had this hatred maybe towards their victimizer, all this hatred. And what does the Bible say? When we hate someone, it's like what? Murder, right? The Bible calls us like a murder. So 
that person could have totally forgot about how they were victimized. And yet there's legality set. People say, well, that's not fair, right? But that's the, the devil don't play fair. He goes according to God's law. But when you ask the Lord to search your heart, he'll bring that to memory. Say, all right, son, all right, daughter, you need to repent and renounce this. I'm going to heal your heart. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to heal your heart. But you need to re first forgive this person. And I'm going to give you the power to forgive that person. And see, all this time for years, the devil could have been holding that against them. And they were wondering why they weren't getting a breakthrough in a certain area. Or it could have been an event way back um, in grade school where bullies were bullying, you know, someone, this, uh, you know, an individual. And just bullying and bullying them. And now they might be doing well, but they wanted to forget all that, put that behind them. Right. They don't even think about it. But they had this hatred, this unforgiveness towards those bullies. And I'm not saying God holds everything, you know, against us. Some things maybe, be, you know, God will throw things out of court. Right. But there are maybe there could be things that uh, -uh the devils argue. No, mm -mm. they're still guilty of this sin. And I want legal right to keep, you know, uh, bringing fourth judgment on him for this then but once they repent god's a loving god he'll exonerate us he'll exonerate you know those who have sinned and you know and now once they're forgiven there's no more legality so there's no more legality they're set free right now their petitions can go through to god's throne and be granted so out of the Father's love, mercy, and grace for us, he sent his Holy Spirit to be our counselor. The Holy Spirit is our court-provided legal counselor, which searches our heart thoroughly for any present and past spiritual, that's what they are, spiritual crimes we have committed that Satan would use to persecute against us, such as unforgiveness, pride, habitual sin, uncasted cares, etc. Or it could be an item that you have in your house. That you don't even know is given legality for demons to come in, right? It could be a, a statue that maybe is consecrated to pagan gods. That that's bringing that legality. You know, it's like you want to ask the Holy Spirit. He'll he'll put something in your spirit, in the thoughts of your head, and then you'll just have a peace to know that's what it is. Mm -hmm. You know. Scripture tells us that Satan is our accuser day and night. That's Revelation, is Revelation I'm sorry, 12.10. Satan is constantly seeking legal right through humanity's sin to block prayer petitions and to obtain legal authority to curse and even kill. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. This is why so many individuals, including Christians, live defeated lives. Out of not just disobedience, but ignorance. And many die prematurely. Again, Hosea 4 and 6 states what? My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Now, the good news is we serve a loving God and judge. He's not only our God, he's our judge who is ready to forgive the one with a sincere and repentant heart. So he's ready to forgive the person with a sincere and repented heart. What does First John 1, 9 say? If we confess our sins. He's faithful and just. That's right. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to what? Cleanse us. There's that word cleanse again. Mm -hmm. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, after we repent, he cleanses our heart. It's vital that we have no unforgiveness and that God's word tells us that if we don't forgive, God will not what? Forgive us. And here it is, Mark eleven twenty five. 25. And when you stand praying, forgive if ye have ought against any, that means unforgiveness, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. It's Mark eleven twenty five. 25. Another big hindrance to prayers 
being blocked is holding on to uncasted cares. You know, and I just, you know, came to this revelation a, a while back. People say, that's not a big deal. Uncasted cares, that's not the big sin, right? No, listen to what word, the word of God says about that. God's word tells us that holding on to the cares of the world, you know, or just, you know, caring about the things where the worry, uh, I mean, the cares could be many things. It could be, you know, I, I, you're just caring about your position, um, you know, your status in life, you know, caring about um, material items, you know, name brand things, what people are thinking about you, you know, where you want to be. I mean, your mind is just obsessed with the world system, you know, the Kardashians, all these things. OK, you, you, say, you have all these cares for the world that there's no more care left to care for the things of God. So God's word tells us that when your heart gets to that point, right, it will literally choke God's word within the heart, making it unfruitful or productive. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness, you know, the lust of riches and the lust of other things entering in. Choke the word. And it becometh unfruitful, Mark 4, 19. And see, you know, we were talking about um, how people, some people come to the Lord. They come to the Lord for the amenities, for the luxuries sometimes, you know. And, and sometimes it, it's the evangelist's fault, you know. Because, I, I mean, I remember, like I said, when I, I would witness and I, I was, you know, and I was concerned about I want to see people get saved. So you're dealing with a wealthy person. You know, they think they got everything. Well, God could get you more business, right? That's not the right way to come at someone. Of course, you tell them to repent, but they're thinking, God could get me more business? I guess that's true, you know? And so then what, what happens? You know, people start going to, to church and reading word for the wrong reasons, you know, thinking that, well, they're looking at the, the word of God more as um, a success seminar, Right. In writing that I could, if I follow these formulas, I'll get more riches. No, that's not what we're talking about. You know, you got to come with a clean, um, like I said, a repentive heart, knowing that, you know, you need a savior. You know, first we're guilty of sin, just like David. He knew he wasn't going to be started asking for riches and for his kingdom to be blessed. He knew he had to first what? Get his heart right. So... So what happens is, you know, when you start caring about the things of the world and you're just meditating on that and that's your frame of mind, you literally become unproductive for the kingdom of God. So, okay, we are directed in 1 Peter 5, 7 to cast all our cares to God because he careth for us. And that's true. Have you been, you know, and all of us in ministry, we know that a lot of times, the what the Bible says is many are the uh, the many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. So a lot of times we're going through things, and a lot of times there are certain things maybe that we'll really start maybe worrying about, or uh, you know, in the past, or you know, just really caring about, and you know, we haven't casted our cares, and then maybe um, someone might call us, you know, knowing that we're in ministry, they might need some prayer. But if you're caring about whether it's your bills or, you know, or we're caring about our children or whatever it might be, certain situations, what happens? We're not really going to have a heart to really hear them fully, right? Because we're caring about this, we're caring about that. So a heart's not fully in it. Now, we, I'm not saying we don't care, but it's like, that's why the Lord's like, no, you're going to be ineffective. I can't really use you like I want. You got to cast those cares to me, son. Cast those cares to me, daughter. And that way, like Galatians 2.20, I could really truly work through you. But I can't work through you when you're clogged up with all these cares. I can't really flow through you. Does that make sense? So when a believer chooses to hold on to their worrisome cares other than to cast them, they become consumed with loving the world system. Their soul becomes infected and unfruitful. They become double-minded, embracing two mental paradigms consisting of the carnal mind 
and the mind of Christ, which are at continuous war against each other. That says that in Romans 8, 7. God's word conveys that the double-minded individual should not expect anything. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, never wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. A double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. That's James 1, 5 through 8. Now, with that being said, let's move to the three-point heart checkup. In this process, we are going, we are asking the Holy Spirit to search our heart for the following. Now, this is something, right, we do uh, as deliverance ministers, correct? We, you know, before we, and, and why do we do this? <laughs> because, um, you know, we could be trying to, you know, rebuke a, a demon out of someone. But if that demon has legal right, we could be saying in Jesus' name, getting the oil and everything out. But they're protected by law. They don't have to go. So we're just wasting our time. Right. We're just wasting our time. It's kind of like going to court, someone trying to go to court for child support or, or, you know, get custody of their child. Right. But they didn't do the research. They, they didn't understand that there's certain forms that they have to have. Right. Certain boxes got to be checked. You know, maybe certain um, documents have to be brought in financial documents, but they just go to court. You know, they, they go with a sincere heart, but are they going to get the judgment they want? No. Why? Because they should have what? They should have sought counsel maybe with a paralegal or, or an attorney. But they didn't do that. And that's how many people are when they come into the courtroom of heaven. So note, when coming before the throne of God, always come with thanksgiving. This is important. Always come with thanksgiving and with gratitude in your heart. Why? Because Psalms 104 tells us that. What? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That's a commandment. You know, a lot of times we think that's just an option. Well, I'll think about doing that. Sounds nice. Enter his gates before you come to God. What are you doing? What does God tell you to do? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You know, being thankful for all the goodness, mercy. I'm thinking about all the mercy God shows us and grace he has given us, right? How he's protected us. He's protecting us right now. He's protecting our children right now. You don't think the enemy would take a shot at us if he could? He, and his mission is to still kill and destroy, but why? As we're sitting here in front of our computers, there are angels protecting us. Literally. OK, that's why the enemy hasn't bum rushed us, because there's what we're protected. We need to thank him for that. Our children are protected. Right. So. We need to be people say, well, I have to be thankful. We need to be thankful for that. What are those angels would just have left and God didn't have those angels for us. See, that's why, you know, uh, what was that one problem was Elijah? He said, open the eyes of 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 that man so he could see all those chariots, <laughs> chariots of fire and all those angels that they had, you know, to protect them, right? And then you know, once he saw that, that immediately brought faith and confidence, you know? But that's literally what we have around us. We got angels around us, legions of angels all around us protecting us. There's more for us than against us. And that's what we got to remember. The devil always tries to make us feel like we're outnumbered. No. You know, the kingdom of God outnumbers the devil. But because he's able to make all that noise in our head sometimes, right, and create all these illusions, you know, he makes his army appear, appear like it's bigger than God's army, which is a lie. It's not. Okay, before you start the three-point heart checkup, Enter into praise and worship. This clears the toxic and demonic frequencies in the airwaves, giving you a clear reception in your communication with the Holy Spirit. 
Have you noticed this? Like when you go before the Lord, uh, before you petition that when you do praise and worship, does that make a difference? Do you feel like that makes a difference? Yes. Yes. A huge difference. Right. Actually, it was pretty awesome last night when we did a deliverance. Vanessa started singing the worship. Really? She was being delivered while she was singing and worshiping. Praise yeah. God. You've yeah. done that a few times when we're, you know, we're going in deliverance and you start singing and there's a special anointing yeah. that comes with you know that, that harmony. Because if we look at um, David, remember when um, Saul was tormented with those demons, he would play an instrument, yeah. right? Notes by the Holy Spirit. And that was the first deliverance we really see in scripture is when David would play his instrument and the demons would flee. But like I said, our vocals are an instrument. Your vocals is an instrument, especially when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. So, I mean, that's it's really a weapon. I mean, it's a blessing to God. It's an instrument to, to bless God, but it's also a weapon against the enemy. So we're looking for unrepented sin, right? Unrepented sin. Or, or, or better yet, habitual sin, right? That's sin that people have made excuses for, you know? I'm not perfect. Like some people, maybe it could be pornography, um, could be masturbation, whatever it may be. But these are habitual sins that people say, oh, you know, I'm just a man. I'm just a woman. I'm just made of flesh, right? So they're not really fully repenting for their sins, they're kind of like, you know, most people do that. I know a lot of people that got this issue, right? Mm -hmm. So they kind of, it's not really in their heart to repent. They think, well, I'm, I'm kind of wavering in the middle, so I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm good, you know. I work at it, but I'm only human. I'm only human, You're right? You're not only human. You're spirit too, right? You're born again. And he's given us power to break the chains of sin. So we want to look for that, whatever that might be. Um, but we ask who to search? The Holy Spirit. You say, Holy Spirit, search my heart. Is there any unrepented sin? Right? Then I say, Holy Spirit, search my heart. Is there any unforgiveness in my heart? Just search it, Lord. Is there any cares that I haven't cast it to you? Any worries? Any unbelief in my heart bring it to the surface lord you know proverbs 16 3 states that if i commit my work to you you'll establish my thoughts and then you be still psalms 46 10 says be still know that i'm god be still and god will start revealing unrepented sin in your heart be still it might be an hour just be still wait on god He'll show you there's unforgiveness. You might say, I forgave them. And then God will show you where, no, but look at the attitude of your heart still towards them. Every time somebody mentions their name, you cringe. Right? I want to help heal that. And sometimes that takes time. We got to wait before God. It's not, a lot of times this ain't a quick thing. A lot of times people call me on the phone one prayer. I'll take them through these three steps. I say, hey, you go do this. Then call me back after you've done this. Sometimes they call me back, sometimes they don't. But to those that do, many times we see a really awesome breakthrough. I said, don't rush. So I'll be here. Just take your time. When you're done, give me a text. And then we'll, I'll call you back and we'll pray. But, you know, this ain't something I want to, sometimes, sometimes it's something I'll, I'll walk them through and then, I, you know, we'll wait a little bit. But sometimes I'm thinking, there's some things deep in this person's heart. This might take a couple hours or longer. You know, or they might even need to go on a fast. So the Holy Spirit could speak to them. It depends how much they've been polluted. Like they're listening to all types of ungodly music, having ungodly friends. There's a lot more pollution there. Right? They got to clear the airways. You know, they got a lot of demonic frequencies floating around. They can't hear the frequency of the Holy Spirit. 
You know, they can't even sit still. They're restless. You got to get to that point to where you can be still. Right? So you really connect with God. That's an instruction. Be still. Be still. What's he saying? And know that I'm God. They said that's the only way you're going to know that I'm God is if you be still and focus on me. Isaiah 26, 3 says what? It's, it says perfect peace are those that keep their mind on him. See, be still, keep your mind on God. He'll show you, you know, you've been worrying about this. You haven't casted this. This is choking the word in your heart, making you unfruitful, unproductive. You need to cast that. You need to repent for that, for doubt and belief. And you need to cast that. You need to cast that care to me. So this might take some time. And again, you say, Holy Spirit. Father, I'm just asking that your Holy Spirit search my heart. Search my heart in Jesus' name. Whatever it may be. Go into my, and search my soul. Search my heart. And then I like to, you know, keep a piece of paper and a pen. When the Lord speaks to you, write it down. Or sometimes on a prayer walk, God will speak to me. And I'll put it in my phone or even I'll speak an audio message into my phone. And I'll go back and write it down and just meditate on that, find scriptures to address that issue. So after you petition God's throne, after you petition God's throne to search your heart, be still. That's Psalms 4610. And wait for the Holy Spirit to establish your thoughts. That's key. How does God talk to me? God don't speak to me. That's how he talks to you. He communicates to you through your thoughts. If you burst still, you get the right reception, right? Remember the old internet connections? You had to be still. You can't have that wire moving around, right? Or the internet, right? The connection would drop, right? You want to keep that wire nice and steady into your computer on the old, you know, the old school hookups, Right? You start moving around, you disconnect. That's how we got We got to be still, you know. We got God's technology in us. I mean, it's, high, it's a high-level technology, but he tells us, be still, right? Be still. That's what it takes to truly connect, to have a clear reception with the Holy Spirit. And then once you connect, stay still. I'm going to start downloading. How many know you ever download a movie? online or you know or download uh, a document it sometimes it will take time if you move it around right the connection will stop it's no good you could be 90 percent done but if you disconnect it and you said well i got 90 percent of the file is that going to work you can't even open it right so it's like we got to stay still stay connected what's the bible say wait on the lord right we have to wait on the Lord. Be what does the Bible say in, in, in uh, Philippians? Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. I have to tell that myself that all the time. Sometimes I get anxious, and the Lord keeps reminding me. When I get still, the Lord says, Stop being anxious. Be anxious for nothing. And then He'll show me. I'm thinking about you know, this issue. And the Lord says, why is your mind on that issue and not on me? Isaiah 26, 3. See, so he's speaking to me. Perfect peace. Didn't I tell you perfect peace are those that keep their mind on me? He'll start just speaking to my heart about that. I'm, I'm stressed, Lord. I'm stressed because your mind is on the issue. It's not on me. Be still and think about me. Practice that discipline. The Lord had to tell me that. Practice that discipline. It takes discipline to be still. When you first start off trying to be still, try to be still for just two minutes. You'll start fidgeting. You'll find yourself start fidgeting and, and moving around and thinking about the pizza in the refrigerator that you want to heat up and everything else. Because you know why? Because it's like you could be trying to be still, but 
what else you got to do? You got to keep your mind on him. See, I'm saying it's a combination of things. Keep your mind on him and be still. Right? Be still. Quiet your, quiet your soul. That's, that's how you quiet your soul. Breathe. Sometimes do breathing exercises. Relax your body. Because your body's tense. Relax. Be still. Cast your cares. Rest in me. Then Jesus said, rest in him. Right? When you breathe, it puts you in a rest mode. Okay? And, you know, deep breathing, I'm not talking about, um, was it yoga? Well, not yoga. Is it yoga? Yeah, not talking about yoga or anything like that, that type of breathing. But when you, you know, when you breathe in deep and, 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 and slowly and, and breathe out slowly, do you know that produces alkaline in your blood system? which is very healthy for you. Alkaline are those, you know, the, the cells, it nourishes the cells. So when you eat food, it takes it to the right places in your body. You know, it builds up your immune system. You know, a lot of times you see the alkaline water. That's why people get the alkaline water. You know, you can produce your own alkaline just by deep breathing. You don't even have to buy the water. If you just do practice deep breathing, you produce your own alkaline. See, my, the Bible says, in all thy getting what? Get understanding. See, we, get, we need to have an understanding. Sometimes we have to read health books to get an understanding of our body that God created. Because the Bible says what? It's not good to be zealous without knowledge. Okay? If, if you're going into the computer field, you can't just say, well, I'm just going to read the word. No. The Bible says, okay, that's good. You... You got a desire. I told you I want you to be a computer programmer. Okay, Lord, I'm just going to stay in your word. No, you stay in the word, but you need to get in to the library. You need to get into school, right? And learn how to do computers. Well, can I just get it from you? No, it's not good to be zealous without knowledge. Go get knowledge. The Bible does tell us to get knowledge. Praise God. So after you petition, okay, okay so this is wait on the Holy Spirit to establish your thoughts. We're almost, almost done. Okay, so we got the part of this slide cut off. Remember, the key is that we got to surrender. That's what it says on top. We got to surrender to the Holy Spirit, right? We have to, and, and let the Holy Spirit pray through us. Yeshua, our Savior, modeled this perfectly. You know, so literally, you know, the Bible tells us out of our belly flows rivers of living water. So, you know, remember Jesus said, you know, the words I speak are not my own. I speak only what the Father tells me to speak. So and he stated in John 14, 10, Believest thou not, I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words, listen to what it says. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Right? So Christ modeled this for us. See, he gave us... What is the Holy Spirit? What the Bible says it's from the Father, right? The Holy Spirit is from the Father. So how is this possible for us? Through allowing the Holy Spirit to pray through us. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not. So if you don't know what to pray for, that's okay. If you have the Holy Spirit, don't worry about that. For I don't know what I need to pray for. Ain't this is a blessing? This is a blessing. We don't know what the, we don't even understand what's going on. We could have our child somewhere, they're going through something. We know they're going through something, and we have no idea what it is. But praise God, the Holy Spirit does. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That's Romans 8 26. He that believeth in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's John's. 738. So out of our belly, right, the Holy Spirit is flowing these, you know, uh, rivers of water. And many times that's a, a metaphor also for words, right? It's flowing these words of life. The Bible all, a lot of times refers to, you know, the, the word of God as, as water. I think this is the last slide right here. And... And pray for me. This is Paul said. And this deep. 
and pray for me that utterance may be given unto me from the Holy Spirit. Utterance is what the Holy Spirit gives us. It's like that frequency, that vibration we feel before we pray in the Spirit, right? So we want to make sure that we got the right utterance because sometimes when people false prophesy, they got the wrong utterance. Maybe because their heart's not clean. That's how we get bad prophecy, right? And, it, and any Christian, we're all susceptible to that. All of us are susceptible to that, okay? So, and pray for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly. So you got to have faith to make known the mystery of the gospel, Ephesians 6, 19. So allow the utterance of the Holy Spirit to establish your thoughts. You know, not only in your mouth, the Holy Spirit, but you know, you get utterances in your, in your, in your thoughts. Allow, you know, just visualize as the Holy Spirit flows from your belly. That's how, you know, we speak in our spirit language, but it could also go into our mind. Did you know that? And, and, and formulate thoughts, that utterance. We allow it, we relax. All of a sudden you'll feel a flow just come into your mind and God will, as it says in Proverbs 16, three, he will establish your thoughts. You know, I, I had a situation where I was like in a fork in the road today and I had to pray and I got still before the Lord. I said, Lord, I need, I need you to speak to me on this. I need you to establish my thoughts. And I got still. And he's always faithful. And it took a while, but then all of a sudden, you know, that peace came. That's how I know it's of the Lord. The peace will come, a supernatural peace and just a knowing and a faith, right? Of what I need to do or what I need not to do. Of what I need, that's important. What I need to do, a desire to of what I need to do and a desire of what I need not to do. So it goes both ways. So as you meditate on it over and over, which the Bible tells us to do in Joshua 1 8, it will download from your mind into your spirit, which creates that spiritual atomic power you'll need against the kingdom of Satan to bring forth a breakthrough. I'm going to say it one more time. So allow the utterance of the Holy Spirit to establish your thoughts. And how do you get that? When you're still. When you're still, he'll start establishing your thoughts. And imaginations for the prayer. And he'll give you imaginations from those thoughts. that Because you know how many know the devil gives us, will try to give us imaginations about fear. He'll plant a thought in your head, then he'll give you an imagination, right? To put 10s and 20s on it to make you really fearful. But guess what God does? He'll give us a thought, then he'll give us imagination, right, to increase our faith in what he said. If we meditate on that, after you meditate on the, his God's thoughts, you'll start getting imaginations. And you start getting those pictures, and what does that do? That grows your faith and grows your faith and grows your faith, right? So as you meditate on it over and over, it will download from your mind into your spirit. That's why we got to be careful what we meditate on. Because if you meditate on negativity, if you meditate on lust, what is it doing? It's coming from your brain and it's your, your, your brain's like a mouth. It just starts chewing stuff up and it'll just drop down into your spirit. That's how people get an unclean heart or a clean heart. Because remember, it, it is a scripture where Jesus says, you are clean because I've spoken to you. After you know, Remember, after you spoke to him, now you are clean because he spoke his word to them. So he was saying... That his words cleansed his disciples as he was speaking to them. So as you meditate on it over and over, it will download from your mind into your spirit, which cr creates the spiritual atomic power you will need against the kingdom of Satan to bring forth a breakthrough. Now, remember, this is this is crucial. God always reminds me of this is not by power, our power, not by our might. You know, from our soul power. Not our, it's not our soul power, right? Our physical power. That's what he's saying. But by what? The Spirit of God. That's Zechariah 4 9. Or is, it, is that, I'm not sure if that's, is that me. Is it Zechariah 4 6? Can you check that out? I want to make sure I get that right. Is it Zechariah 4 6 or Zechariah 4 9? I think it might be Zechariah 4 6. Is that right? Four six. Uh, yeah, six. six. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's a typo right there. 
Oh, see, the Holy Spirit established my thoughts on that. Said, no, no, son. That it's not nine, it's six. Okay, well, praise God. We're, uh, you know, this segment's complete. This is uh, uh, the end of the segment of our curriculum on this topic. But any any thoughts? What, what, you know, what, 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 I, I was just thinking about the story about King David. I just can't let that go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because I learned so much from it. And uh, the point that I wanted to make about the story about, well, it's not a story, but, you know, the word of God is that we have to be very careful. I have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. King David was the king mm. of Israel, of all of Israel. That's and right. he abused his authority. Mm. That's and, he, and he um, sinned, you know, several in one situation, but several different types of ways. And even after he did what he did, he was trying to cover it up. He even tried to cover it up. Mm -hmm. And um, when Bathsheba became pregnant, when she yeah. came to him and told him that she was pregnant, he tried to cover it up. And that didn't work. And so he went to more extreme measures. And, and the reason why I think I'm sharing this is because if we're not careful when that sinful thought turns into a sinful act, it can be a domino effect, just that's like right. it was for King David. Mm, that's good. And it can cause a lot more to happen than what needs to happen. Yeah. And, right. and also King David was at the wrong place at the wrong time. He wasn't even supposed to be at home. Mm. He was supposed to be out to war, but right. he decided to stay at home. Mm. So he wasn't even where he was really Off his post. supposed to be. Yeah. So, so we, we just gotta have, be on post, huh? So yeah, we do. Yeah. We have to be on post and we have to be careful because we all can fall into temptation and we all can fall into sin so much to where we're blinded by it. We, right. He was so blinded. When we read the scripture, it's easy for us to see how the domino effect took place and ask the question, why didn't he stop himself way back here? Why didn't he stop himself when he looked upon this woman? Mm. But it didn't stop there. He was the king. He could have anything he wanted to have. Right. And he exercised that authority at that time, even though it was wrong. Mm. So That's we've good. got to be really careful. We're not kings, but you know what? We can also fall into sin like that in other ways, in other areas of our lives. That's why we need the Holy Spirit as our helper to be able to look at our hearts and show us what's really in there. That's right. See, David had the prophet Nathan and the Lord sent Nathan to, to deal with that. No, we you. have the person of the Holy spirit who is with us at all times. And all we have to do is ask him and he will do it. He will examine us. That's good. I like the way you, you drew that. Cause that's right. The Holy spirit is kind of like that Nathan for us. huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because good. sometimes God will, you know, tell Holy spirit, I need you to check that. That's right. I need you to check that since they're not checking it. Mm -hmm. I want you to check it. You know, we need to be checked. But I just wanted to share that because no, that's great. That's we great. Can, we can all fall like King David did in that's one right. situation or another. We just have to be careful not to to become so um, prideful and so right. self centered. You know, and um, you know, King David kind of put himself above God's law. He was mm. acting above the law. That's right. He really was. When you that's think right. about. It. No, absolutely. He was acting above the law. And, you know, and, and that's why it's like that should be part of our routine every day. Yeah. Lord, search my heart. And I guarantee you, he will show you things. And, you know, I, I said, you know, I remember being in the store and um, this lady was just cursing. And, you know, she had her little child there. And I'm just looking at her like, what type of mom is that? You know? And I'm thinking like, man, I'm wow, I just can't believe this. And the Lord just convicted me. You know, so are you, 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 you know, I mean, look at your heart. You're just being judgmental. Have you thought about even praying for her? You know, praying for their kids? Do you, you understand that they're bound by the devil? You know? Yes, that's wrong, but look at your heart. You see? And it's like, see, your soul wouldn't really catch that. Right? Your mind would be like, yeah, that's that's right. That's wrong, man. What's wrong with these people? But your spirit, 
right? The, the Holy Spirit will go down into your spirit and then just show you your heart. You're self-righteous. Look how self-righteous you're being. You know, look how judgmental you're being, you know, or you're thinking about this person, what they did and how, when was the last time you prayed for them? Are they on your prayer list? You know, there's someone that done me wrong. I mean, done me wrong. And uh, last week, and I was doing that, Lord said, put them on your prayer list. And I, I ain't going to lie, I felt like a little tug, <laughs> you know, because I wanted some judgment, spiritual judgment for them, not for them to die or nothing like that. But it was like, you know, they done me wrong. They done, and, and, they, and they continue to do wrong, you know. The Lord said, put them on your prayer list. And I wrote it, I wrote it in, typed it in. He says, now every day you decree, decree their name along with all these other names. And sometimes when I would go, my heart would kind of stutter a little bit when I mentioned their name. And the Lord said, look at your heart. Do I want to see anybody perish? You know, do I care about them? Do I love them? Well, you're supposed to have my same heart, right? So... What's, what's going on with you? Why aren't we calibrated here? See, I had to get that right before the Lord. See, my soul didn't catch that. But right now, let's go ahead and, and close. And uh, Sister Vanessa, if you can lead us or, or lead those viewers who want to accept Yeshua as their personal Lord and Savior, who want to repent, who want to get their heart clean, if you can lead them in a prayer, then after that, uh, Sister Rosina, if you can close us out with whatever the Holy Spirit, you know, has within your heart, you know, I, I know you pray through the utterance of the Holy Spirit. So we know that's going to be a great way to take us out of here. Amen. Sister Rosina, did you have anything you wanted to share? Um, well, I mean, what you said about King David, he got too relaxed. And I think sometimes we, we could become too relaxed. Right. That's good. Christ. You know, we become too relaxed. We we just kick our feet up and just because I mean that's the only reason why he got where he was because he became relaxed in it. You know, he didn't feel like he had to go to battle, so he relaxed. He put mm. his guard down, and we have the tendency of sometimes putting our guards down too. Right. We relax in our walk with Christ. Amen. And um, that's just one thing I wanted. That's to good. Say. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Praise God. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. So now we're going to go into our prayer where we invite you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. And also to remind you that if you choose to pray this prayer on tonight, what you're saying is you are relinquishing all of your rights and you're saying you're giving the Lord Jesus Christ full and complete rights to your life to be your Lord and to um, use you for his will and for his purposes. That's what you're saying when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And also we would like to remind you, if you are not already affiliated with a local uh, church in your community, to be sure to get plugged in so that you continue to walk this faith journey out with the Lord and continue to, to grow in the word of God and to be in fellowship with believers of Christ. So I'm going to begin to pray and just ask that you would please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I need you. Please forgive me for all my sins. I repent. I turn away from my sins and I turn to you. I believe that you died on a cross for my sins. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I open the door of my heart and receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Take control of my life and make me the person you want me to be. Use me as you will. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you so much for 
praying that prayer and know that once you have prayed this prayer, you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. You are adopted into the family of God right now. Welcome to the family. Praise God. (laughs) All right. Lord, we just thank you so much, Lord, for today, Father. We thank you, God, that you're the judge, Father, but you're also gracious and merciful to us, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us the Holy Spirit, our attorney, that fights on our behalf, Father. Because, Lord, we couldn't do it, Lord, without the Holy Spirit, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the word, Lord, that was spoken, Father. And I pray, Father God, that people would receive, God, the ones that listen to this broadcast, Lord, would receive what was spoken from Brother Ray's mouth, that you put it, the utterance in his mouth to speak forth your word, Father. And I pray, God, that they would receive, God, that they would search their hearts, Father. The three heart searches that we need to do, Father, the unrepented sin, Father, I pray, God, that, that you will, that they will search their hearts, Lord, unrepented sin, Father, unforgiveness in their hearts, God, and uncasted cares, Father. I pray, God, that they would lay it all at their at your feet, Father. I pray, God, that they would just search their, their hearts deeply, Father, God, that you reveal things and bring it to surface, Father, what needs to be done, Father. Any of those things, unrepentant sin, Father, I pray, God, that you will bring it, Lord, to the surface for them, God. Unforgiveness, Father, and uncasted cares, Father, I just pray, God, that it would all come to surface, Father. I pray, God, that people, Lord, would would want to be set free and delivered, God. I pray, God, that 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 would be their heart's desire, Lord, to grow closer, God, and get a better understanding, Lord, of your word and and their relationship with you, Father. Draw them closer to you, Father. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for this word, God. I pray, God, that it would be planted in our hearts, God, and that that seed, Lord, would be water, God, and that it would grow deep roots, Father. I pray, God, that this word, Lord, we we would chew upon it, God, and, and review the scriptures, God, the words, God, that Brother Ray put on the board, God, that we would write them down, Father, and that we would meditate on that word, God, day and night, Father, God, that it would grow that it would go deep into our hearts, God, that God, that we would just, um, just really meditate on those words, God. And God, I just love, and I thank you so much, Father, for today, Father. I thank you, Lord, for your loving, your grace, and your mercy, Father. I thank you, God, that you are just merciful to us, God, even when we don't deserve it, Father. We definitely don't deserve your mercy, God, but you give it to us each and every day, Father. And I thank you, God, for that, Father. And Lord, I just love and thank you, God. I just ask, Father, that you will bless everybody, Lord, that is listening to this broadcast, God, that you will bless their homes, their families, Father, their children, God, their their aunts and uncles, Father. I pray, God, that your wind of change will blow through their lives, Father. And I pray, God, that they would want a deeper understanding, Father, of you, God, that they would hunger and thirst and desire, Lord, that relationship with you, Father. And I pray, God, for those those ones Lord, that gave their lives to Christ, God. I pray, Father, God, that they will just take that step, Lord, and run with it, Father, that that fire, Lord, that burning fire, Lord, would just burn within their hearts, God, within their inner being, God. And God, that they would want to change, Lord, and not be the same, God. God, that they would not want to be a part of the world, God, but God, that they would want to change their lifestyle, God, that they want to do a 100% change about, Father. And God, I just love and I thank you so much, Lord. And in your name we pray, There's Father. There's no name above Amen. your name. I wouldn't serve any other name. Yeah, sure. There's power in the name There's victory in the name There's healing in the name Healing Anointing in the name There is peace in the name If you would speak aloud Every knee. Every time we There's power in the name. How? There's victory in the name. There's healing in the name. So much healing. Jesus. 
that you have tuned in to this song that you are here tonight maybe you know him already and if you do I know he's been your provider I know he's touched your body I know he's that God of mercy and we can never come to the full revelation of who he is because he's just the almighty he stands all by himself but I want to encourage those that are lost out there come and get a piece of this peace and and, and, and mercy and this anointing you need this power that we talking about you need this comfort that we talking about you need this anointing that we talking about on your life you need this understanding and I don't know what God you serve but this is the one and the only God that will help you in and lead you in the victory this is the only name that will lead you into heaven and so if you without him tonight I encourage you to grab us by the hand grab him by the hand and give him your life. He has ultimate power, ultimate peace, supernatural understanding. And so tonight I want to extend my hand to you and offer you that name. Sure. Mashiach. Jesus, my victory. Jesus, my peace. Come tonight. He won't let you down. I promise. 
Oh, 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 oh,